Hello, everybody, and welcome to the, uh, to the session is probably the most mysterious, yet most exciting title of them all. Um, as you can all read, we're going to talk about workflows, and I'm going to tell you all about the cool stuff we've been doing the past few months to make your workflows even more fast and even more awesome than they were. Um, my name is Jordan Barret, welcome. Um, I'm an Activity Core developer, and almost two years ago, I joined Alfresco together with Tom, and we found the Activity Project, and so here we are now today. So, just a quick question. Um, how many of you here in the room today know what Activity is, know what it does, what it's used for? You can be proud about it, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good, so, so more than half of it, that's good. Um, so yeah, for the other ones, I've just added a very, a very short overview of what activity is. Um, not very technical, just an overview in some words. So let's get going. So first of all, activity is a lightweight thing. Um, that means that the stuff we're working on is just a Java library, so or a jar for the technical people here in the room, um, which means that if it's a jar, you can use it in any Java environment, OSGI, Java Enterprise, normal Java, on a service bus, in Swing if you like. I mean, if it runs Java, you can run activity on it. It's as simple as that. Um, second thing is that being lightweight is actually a pretty big difference with many of our competitors. I'm not going to call names, but they also offer food next to us there. Um, so what they do is they offer you this big black box server. It costs quite a lot of money, of course, and you have to hire 10 of their consultants to make it work. Um, and basically what a big black box does, it, it does exactly the same. Just the same as we offer in a very convenient, lightweight Java way. Exactly the same, and they ask like this tremendous amount of money for it. It's not fair, I know, but that's the way it is. Secondly, we're open source. We're on GitHub, which means you can just fork our code, uh, send us pull requests where we have an open uh, forum, we have an open issue tracker. Um, so yeah, if, if you want to contribute something, it's very easy to do, there is very little steps you need to take to actually start doing something with activity. Uh, we're using the Apache license, which basically means you can do anything with it, and we just don't care, unless it's very good, and then we ask you to contribute, of course. So, activity allows you to do a thing which we call BPM, business process management and workflows. Um, and there are companies in the world, everywhere, where you can go follow courses, and they'll explain to you what BPM is, and they'll ask like 3,000 euro per person for each day for, uh, yeah, to explain it to you. And I'm going to explain it to you in just one minute, because it's that simple. Um, and also because I can just explain it better than they do, I think. Um, basically, business processes are everywhere. Um, ordering a coffee in the Starbucks, that's a business process. Getting the coffee from wherever, which country, uh, which, which country makes coffee? Costa Rica, there you go. From Costa Rica to here in San Jose. That's a business process. Uh, organizing this um, DEF CON, I'm sure Jeff can tell you that's quite a complex business process with many paths going the wrong way. Um, but also just booking your hotel room, business process. So if you think about it, um, everywhere there are steps and a certain flow of things and, and people are doing these steps and some, most of the time money is involved, then you're talking about a business process. And the art of business process management is actually just noting down that business process, is documenting it. And some companies, they're happy just documenting it. There are many companies, they're just writing their business process down, and then they just discuss it, and nothing more. Other companies, they want to automate it. Eh? They want to use this noted down business process and, and execute it in an automized way, digital way. Uh, and that's where activity comes in. So activity allows you to do exactly that, run those business processes, you note it down on an automated platform. And the way you note it down in activity is something called BPMN 2.0. Uh, it stands for Business Process Model and Notation. And it's basically an industry accepted standard, uh, which is pretty simple if you look at it. Basically what it tells you, that I'm not going to take this screen, sorry guys, um, I can't split myself up. I'll, I'll come back to that screen later on, you know. Um, so basically what it does, it it's says stupid things like, if you have like a rounded rectangle with a little guy in the top left corner there, it means a human step, something a person has to do. And if you have like a circle on the boundary of that rectangle, that means you're waiting. So in this step, you're going to wait until a message comes in and then you're going down. So they just specify the shapes and they also specify the XML because this is the visual representation, but they also specify an XML counterpart. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, 
what makes this important is that with a standard like VPMN 2.0, you have this pool of people, developers, business analysts, and whatnot, who speak the same language. And in software development, that's quite something, because you know it's very hard from business to developers to communicate in the same way. And having this diagram to just, yeah, to just have a common diagram which shows you what is actually expected already helps a lot. Um, <clears throat> it also means, because it's a standard, you can just have your business process designed and activity if you want to run it on another one of our competitors, which is also compatible with BPMN 2.0, you can just do that. I'm not going to say it's smart, but you could do that if you really want to. Welcome, 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 welcome. Like I said, this is the, the pain of being after lunch. And the pain of John Newton doing 10 minutes extra of his time. Yeah, so last but not least, activity is, is and has always been um, very uh, good for developers. We have always put them in, in, in the first place. Uh, we have very good integration in any of these Java frameworks, you know, OSGI, like I told you, Spring, uh, Java Enterprise Edition. Um, so we take pride in that. We make it much easier than our competitors to work in a Java environment with BPM. So in a nutshell, you have your business idea, you have your business plan. Uh, you note it down in some formal way, which we use BPM 2.0. It has a visual representation. It also has an XML counterpart. You just give that to your environment. The environment can be anything. Alfresco, JBoss server, Tomcat, Glassfish, Amazon Web Service on the cloud, CloudBeat on the cloud, whatever. If it runs Java, you can run activity on it. This is just this is an example of, of a Spring config where you just inject the uh, activity service in, and that, that stuff just works. But that was, of course, a very happy story. Um, I just told you that. For developers, it's very flexible, very performant, very tunable, tweakable, not a black box. That's all very, all very sunshine and roses. But in reality, um, for non-technical users, it's pretty hard, actually. It's pretty hard to get running. It's pretty hard to use. That's a simple truth. Um, and the problem is, in many companies, and not all the companies, they're also good companies, of course, but in many companies, uh, these people, so the, um, I'm now thinking about sales guys, um, CEOs, all these guys were non-technical, you know. They, they, they tend to have like the money, they tend to have like the power to decide what to do with the money and which software to buy. I know it's not a fair thing to have, but as a developer, there's not much you can do about it. So if you now have this framework, which is the awesomest framework you ever saw, Activity, and you, and you really love it as a developer, but you just can't convince your business people of Activity, then you have a problem, you, you lose this pretty framework and you have to use something of our competitors, sadly. So, can we find a balance between those two? Can we find a way to offer the power to developers, which we always had and which we take pride to, and can we also offer something which is good for um, business people? And the problem of, of workflow in Alfresco today is that it's just too, te too technical. So, I'm just going to show you a very short example of how you do it today. So suppose you have a three-step process, A, B, C, three steps a person has to do, um, and all of these steps have a form. So you have to fill in in step A, you have to fill in the form to go, go further to step B, you have to fill in C, etc. very simple. Um, if you want to do that today in Alfresco, what you have to do is you have to write a BPMN 2.0 XML file. That's the graphical thing I showed you with the XML counterpart. That's the first thing you have to write. But for each of those tasks, you have to write what we call in Alfresco a content model type. So in that content model type, you're going to define your properties, your constraints, and all the other stuff that needs to be there. And that's not enough. You also need to write a form config. And that form config just references those properties. And it basically says how these content models, these user tasks, will be placed on the screen. And all of that, then again, is, is referenced from a BPMN 2.0 file. And you know it's like a big spider web of references and things go wrong. You can see that there's plenty of things if you make a typo here, it's, it's pretty hard to find where the typo is. So it's a lot of XML, and XML in itself is not very hard. You know, this is, this is not rocket science, but it's just boring. I mean, as a developer, you don't like to write this stuff, right? Yeah. What was it? Yes, I like to write this stuff, no? Oh, yeah, hell no. Thank you. <laughs> Indeed. It's, I mean, it's this simple. This, this, this is just but it's, it's monkey work, you know? You, no, you don't like to do that. So that's what you have to do today. You have to write all this crappy XML. And to make things worse, you have to put them in the right places. 
So for example, the BPMN2O uh, file needs to go into the repository. Now there are two ways to do that. Either you can upload it to the, what we call in our press code, the data dictionary in a certain folder, or you can deploy it in a Spring file. So you have a Spring config file, and when the Alfresco server boots, it reads it, blah, blah, blah. Content model is the same, but in another folder. So you can upload it to the data dictionary, but another folder. And you can also put it in a Spring file, another Spring file. That's already four different things. And then for the form config, to make things even worse, you can upload it dynamically to REST, or you can put it, again, in another Spring file, which is loaded by share when it boots. So you notice all these things. You have already this crappy XML and you have all these things going into different places. So it's very hard if you, if you make a mistake to actually know where the mistake happened. And what you actually want is that you just want to have all these things in the right place and have all the right XML being done for you. And if that's done, yeah, you can be happy. You put it all in the right place, you scored, right? But like I just said, as a developer, you can't be happy with what you've just done. I mean, it's, it's boring work. Good for consultants, though, if you're paid by the hour, but still. And we can and should do better, like I told you. Um, we should think of a way to balance between the power for the developers and power for the business users. And also, don't get me wrong, please, the current workflow in Alfresco is powerful, is flexible and customizable. You can tweak it at, at very different layers and, and gives you a lot of flexibility. And that's also the, the same, the problem. You know, because it's so powerful and flexible, it's quite technical and it's quite um, time consuming. You know, all the XMLs, all the right places, it's, it's pretty hard, it's pretty boring. So that is why we started with something which we call Activity Kickstart. That's just an internal name, there's nothing um, officially there going on, just we call it Kickstart. And basically it's about defining a workflow and all the forms attached to that workflow in a very simple UI, which is very easy to understand for people who are not technical. You don't need to know any BPMN 2 you don't need to know Java, and all those crappy XML files are generated for you behind the scenes and are put in the right places for you. But, and that's very important, the last point on this slide is that all the results of what is produced by this tool should be usable by, the, uh, I would say, the normal, develop, uh, normal people, I wanted to say, but that's not correct, the developers. Um, they should be able to take it, run with it, and just tweak it like they used to do, right? Um, oh yeah, this is the this is the slide where I misuse my my two my pictures of two children um, to convince you, of course, that I'm I'm right. But in fact, the um, both of my kids they're quite a bit related to this activity Kickstart project. Um, so you know, my first son was born uh, two years ago in a few months, six August 2010. And you know that uh, uh, as a father, it's very hard. You know, the labor, the birth itself. It's pretty tiring, you know? So I had, this, I had this month of parental leave. In Belgium, you get a month of parental leave to, yeah, to get back into your, in your even. Um, and I had this time, and you know, when you're a father, there's not much you can do with this baby because this baby just needs his mother, you know? You can't feed it. You, you could replace the diapers, in theory. Um, but anyway, <laughs> long story short, I had plenty of free time. And I was able to, I had this idea which, which, which was Activity Kickstart back then. And so I did, I did this. I, I wrote the activity, first prototype for Activity Kickstart. And as you can see, it was part of Activity 5.1. Uh, I wrote it in January on my blog. You can still read about it. We, I wrote about it. And it was like a first, um, yeah, first tryout, first prototype of Kickstart. Uh, and it was part of Activity until Activity 5.7, as you can see. And then we decided to, to scrap it because um, we found back then that it wasn't the right fit for activity. With activity, like I told you in the beginning, um, we wanted to aim for developers, give the power to developers. And we saw that um, the people who were downloading activity were 99% developers and 1% uh, a sales guy who was lost. So that, that's what happened, and we, we scrapped it. And then fast forward one year later, my second son, Mats, was born in July this year. And again, very tiring experience. Um, so I had another month of parental leave, another, and it came to me that, that we should, I felt that there was this potential with Kickstart, which we hadn't unlocked yet. And, and uh, when I thought about it, the problem was actually that we, we put it in activity itself, like the, the, the project itself, but that's not the right place. The right place for it was a, a product where there are actually end users in front of a screen, and that product is, of course, Alfresco. Uh, so I made a prototype for Alfresco, I showed it to the, 
for the big guys in the big tower in Alfresco on the top. Uh, I just showed it to them and they said, okay, that's pretty cool, let's do it. And that's in Alfresco 4, there's, there's now on the slide 4X, but it's actually in Alfresco 4.3, it's going to be part of Alfresco 4.3. Um, yeah, and that's it, that's the history. So um, last week I was in Berlin and there was this one, um, <clears throat> one sales guy in the room. So I don't know, how many sales guys are in the room today? Sales, business analysts, CEOs, it's all the same for me. I don't... Put your hands up high. Right, whoa. The, no. I'm not going to be so harsh as last week. Last week I just had one. So I, I thought that I could handle this guy. It was a little short Spanish guy. So, but six of you, no, that's, that's a little too much for today. Um, anyway, I had some jokes with him that worked pretty well if you're the only sales guy in a room of 80 developers. Um, but he actually coined the term, and I think I'm going to patent it, which is baby-driven development, BDD. I'm going to patent that stuff. So the funny thing is, in activity team, you know that Kickstart is being driven by the birth of my two babies. But other stuff is also driven by babies. So we have Taz, the other guy from the activity team. He wrote two books. The first book is Open Source USBs in Action. Second book is the Activity in Action book. You know? And both of them, coincidentally, were written just after these two children were born. Right? That's not a coincidence, I think. And now we have, like, next week, no, two weeks from now, uh, Frederick, which is another guy from our team, his wife will give birth, hopefully, in two weeks, to uh, a daughter. So, yeah, we have very high hopes for what has to come with activity. Um, anyway, enough talk. I will now show you what all this fuss. I just, very abstract, and I don't like abstract stuff. So let me just show you what I actually mean with all this Kickstarter stuff, right? So the use case I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use the Princeton Blainsboro Hospital. Does that name sound familiar for anybody? Sorry? You do? No, it's Princeton Plainsboro. I'm sure you know the name. Indeed. Indeed. It's the, it's the, the hospital where house works. You know, last week I was in Berlin, and I said house. And even after I said house, nobody really knew house. Apparently it doesn't. I mean, the whole world has that as the top series for last years. Berlin doesn't. And I thought maybe if I pronounce it as, as house, but even then, no. So yeah, they have some catching up to do. Anyway, the process I'm going to implement is very simple. You're sick, you get diagnosed, you're cured, and the hospital gets money. I know the debate in the US is currently about who's paying that money, but let's assume the money is just paid, okay? Um, I'm just using the characters from House just as a reference. This is just pictures for their names. It's not important to actually know them, so don't, be, don't worry if you don't know them. So we have, at the top, we have Eric Foreman. He's the, the boss. Uh, we have then the two doctors. We have House, where the series is all about. So basically, if you don't know House, House is this arrogant asshole doctor, yet he's brilliant. So he saves all the flies. That's why people keep him in the hospital. But he's a really, really difficult person to, to live and work with. Then we have like these four guys and two girls, the two girls and two guys working for him. And they are all part of some of the fresco group I created up from. So we have the hospital board group, we have the principal medical staff, and we have the diagnostics. So they, he is the boss of the diagnostic star of the diagnostic department, and they are the diagnostic staff. Right. Let's get going. So I have now six servers running and three clients. That's a lot of things which can go wrong. So cross all your toes for me, please. Good. So I've created this prototype app. So this is the uh, this is nothing we planned in Alfresco, so don't don't get me wrong, this is just something because I just, I suck really at JavaScript and HTML. That's just the honest truth. And I suck less at iPod development. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to create a very simple two-step process. So suppose we're starting out and the hospital board asks for this very simple process for, to follow up what House is doing, right? So on the left side, I'm going to create my tasks. On the right side, you're going to see the details. So when I create a new step in my workflow, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to call it open the case for the patient. Here we go, first step. Um, I'm going to assign that to, there are a few ways. I can assign that to a group of persons, so any of the groups I just showed you on the screen. I can assign it to a single person or somebody who started this workflow. So I'm now going to do that. So the person who started this workflow will also do the first task, just for demo purposes. That's easy, then I don't have to log out and log in again. Just lazy me. 
Second step is actually the diagnosis, diagnosis of the patient. And this one is going to be handled, of course, by our famous doctor. Here we are. We're going to add some form properties to that first step. So suppose we need things like the name. And that's a mandatory field. We need uh, the social security number, also mandatory. And just to have some meat in that form, we need to have like an acceptance date. The date when actually the, the person was admitted to the hospital. So that's, not a, that's a, an optional property, right? Second step, very easy, just for demo purposes. We're going to call that the disease field. So suppose that House will now discuss with his team and they will just find a disease and that's it. So a very simple process, not really a realistic process, but I just wanted to give you the impression of what this tool is about. It's not about realism of the process, it's more about the functionality, okay? So let's launch it. Let's give it a name, let's call it diagnose. Let's diagnose patient. There we go. And now, in my terminal here, all this ugly XML which I talked to you about, you know, this is the, um, this is the content model XML which is generated. This is the share config which is generated. This is the BPMN20 XML which is generated, etc., etc. So, it's deployed now. It's in our uh, Alfresco. So, let's now switch to Alfresco. I'm logged in as an administrator, so suppose now the administrator is like a lady or a man sitting behind a desk, and when you arrive in the hospital, you have to talk with her or him. So the diagnosed patient workflow, I, actually I should have shown you that, that this was not yet part of Alfresco before. You know, now, now you can think that I'm cheating, and I, that's, that's been there all along, but yeah. Jeff, you know I don't cheat. You can say that to everybody here. Oh, uh, fellow American vouch for me. Here you go. So. We start the workflow. This is a generic start form. So in Alfresco, we have this concept of a, a start form. So before you start a workflow, you have to fill in a start form. I didn't tweak it yet. This is just a, some generic which I used. The idea is that later on, when we do it for real, that this is also tweakable, of course. So let's, um, let's the first is the curious case of Benjamin Button. Anybody seen this movie? Yeah, I think the ladies definitely will have seen it. This with Brad Pitt, by the way. So let's start it. So as, you, as I told you, the first task is going to be assigned to the person who started the workflow. In this case, it's going to be the same receptionist, the admin. Um, and I had to fill in like the name, social security number. So let's just fill in, Benjamin Button. Social security number. In the US, it's, it's nine digits, right? One. Here we go. Oh, with dashes. Okay, suppose, suppose now that we, we forget about our dashes. I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, it was my uh, enthusiasm coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll restrain myself further on. Okay, let's continue. Second step, so now the first step is done, task is done. Second step was then um, assigned to house, you know. So we're going to log in as house. He now has in his task list the curious case of Benjamin Button. He needs to diagnose a patient. Suppose now that we, we are, um, they discussed it. They have like a really long house, Siri, one hour of discussion of what it could be. Um, and anybody know which disease they always try first in house? Everybody, anybody seen house, you definitely know that. There's one disease they always pick as the first guess. Indeed, lupus. It's, it's never lupus. It's never, I've seen every, every single episode and they always try lupus, and it's never lupus, right? I think that's an inside joke of the series, but anyway. So let's suppose it's lupus, is done. Our first process is done. You know, this wasn't about the realistic process, it was more about showing how easy it is. People that have used activity and the workflow before, they will agree with me that compared to what I've shown you now, if you had to do this, even this simple process before, that it would, that it would have taken you like at least a week. I was talking with these consultants last, last uh, week in Berlin, and one of the guys told me, yeah, if I have to do some activity workflow stuff in Alfresco, my minimum amount, my minimum unit of estimation is half a week. So he was just saying, yeah, this, this looks like a two-week process. So I can just show you how long did I did without a talk, maybe half a minute. Anyway, um, one of the things I also told you is that uh, it's very important that as a developer, you have access to all these things. So if you want to customize them again, 
Um, this should be very easy. So I'm just going to show you now what's all being generated is just put in the data dictionary. So for example, the XML, so the business process XML, just lives in the data dictionary. And as a developer, you can just take this and start tweaking it as you are used to do today, right? Okay, second thing. Let's suppose now that um, House gets access to the IT system and he wants to change the process a bit. So the first thing, of course, he's going to change is he doesn't want that, that other people assign work to him. No, he wants to choose the interesting cases himself, right? So he's going to change the open patient case to choose patient case. And he's going to assign that to himself so nobody else can give him work. I'm just going to leave the, the form properties the same just for demo purposes. Um, and the second step is he's not going to do the work himself, of course. He's going to assign that to one of his doctors. So I'm now going to, where is this? Ah, oh, the, the first one. So he's going to assign it to the diagnostic medicine staff, you know, because he doesn't like doing the actual work. So let's launch it again. Here we go. So now a new version is deployed. The old one is still there, but if you now start a new workflow in Alfresco, it will start this new um, workflow. The point of this is not, again, to, to show you like a realistic hospital process because there are people who know better than me what to do, but the point is that I don't know, I wasn't timing, I should actually do it. That just took me like 25 seconds maybe to do the update, to launch it to Alfresco, whatever. No reboot required, no oh, magic, this is just all at runtime. So, let's now try. I'm logged in as house, that's good. I'm going to start a new workflow. I'm going to start a diagnosed patient. Uh, second, uh, I've written it down, all the steps I have to take because I have a very small head and I can't put it all in my head, you know. Um, so the message which we fill in now is that the patient makes bad jokes all the time, right? Last week when I had only one sales guy, I was using him then as the patient, but I'm not going to pick somebody here. Okay, so first step is assigned to house. I'm logged in as house, this is just for the demo purpose because otherwise I have to log in and log out. So. Is Eric this time in my presentation? No, he isn't. He promised me to be here. You know, Eric is my colleague, the share guy, and he promised me to be here, but he isn't here, so I'm really let down by him. So I'm going to use him as the patient. Nine. Uh, no acceptance is not important. Second step was done by the medicine staff, you know, one of those four doctors which I showed, and one of these doctors is Chris Staub, so when he now logs in into uh, Alfresco, he now sees below there, he now sees that there is this one task open for him, which is not that assigned. So the unassigned means it's assigned to a group, and you can just take it out of the group and put it on your own name. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to fill it in directly just to save some time. Um, and last week I was in Germany, so I, I, I found this very funny um, German disease called Witzelsucht. I don't think that they, they laughed immediately when I typed that. I don't know anybody here in the U.S. knows what it is, Witzelsucht. No? Well, I didn't either, so I had to look it up. But apparently, it's this funny German, well, it's not a German disease. It's, it's a German name. It's not a German disease. But it basically means that it's a, um, a, a defect to the brain, which makes you do making funny jokes all the time, and you don't realize that they're actually very bad. It's, a, it's an honest, real disease which exists. So I could make now a joke about sales and business analysts here in the room now, but I'm not going to do it. Um, but you got the message. Anyway, second, uh, second process done. Um, let's make it a bit more realistic, just to show you now that it's not just very simple steps which you can do with it, but it's actually quite a bit of fun you can have with it. So we're going to add two new steps. First one is what they always do in house. They're going to take an MRI. Take MRI, I'm just going to use that. Take MRI. Um, when you take an MRI, you're going to have you're going to into the machine and you have like this scan thing coming out. So let's just upload that as a document. So now select docs as type. Also going to add something like, if you can also make a conclusion already based on the MRI, let's do that, it's not mandatory. Add a new step, um, take brain biopsy. You could never be sure enough, I mean. Uh, and then 
the lab results. Suppose that we take this little piece of the brain, we send it to the lab, it comes back, we have the chemical results, and that's the idea of this, so that's a mandatory document property. And now, um, let's just now wiggle here. Oh yeah, that's also what I'm going to show you, uh, what I want to tell you. This is, this, is, this is an iPad app, and it actually works on my iPad. So my, the idea was that I walked around and I was then showing you, because the Wi-Fi is pretty good here, so I was testing this out this morning, trying it, to wiggle it around and, and trying to, to make it work. But I found out that in Alfresco we have the security policy, that if you don't use your uh, iPad for five or 10 minutes, it just shuts it down, shut down itself. And I lost my Wi-Fi and my app crashed, and yeah, that, that's the reason why I now have to use the simulator. So thank you, Alfresco Security, for that. Anyway, so that's, it works on a real iPad or, or iPhone, whatever, um, but unfortunately I couldn't demo it. Well, I could demo it if I would be like here wiggling every two minutes a bit with my, but then you would just laugh at me if I just standing here doing nothing, I wiggle my iPad. So yeah, I didn't do that. The MRI is going to be done by one of our doctors. The brain biopsy is going to be done by one of our doctors. And we're going to do the MRI after the first step. So just take it, put it up there, and take the other one, put it up there. Here we go. Um, and we want to do those two things in parallel. There's no reason why these two things need to go sequential, right? You can take an MRI and do a brain biopsy almost at the same time. So let's just swipe it. So then it would be cool, like I could swipe it to the right. And, um, but yeah, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't really work if I show it my mouse. So you can swipe it to the right and then it's in parallel, right? Diagnosis of the patient is then done by our doctor house and just for the fun, just send the bill now, being done by whatever, hospital board, and just add here an amount, oops, amount, here we go. So as you can see, the point is again not to have a realistic process, but the point is to show you how fast it is compared to before, and you can just wiggle around and, and, and make a process in a matter of minutes compared to a matter of weeks. Let's launch it. Again, XML being generated, put in the right place. Here we go. Uh, going to log out. Log in as house. Uh, let's start a workflow. Here we go. Uh, last patient is a patient who shows signs of unnatural growth. Unnatural growth. We can have a picture there. So we have, for example, a site which contains all our patient records. It's Mr. Jack Black. So I will just show you the issue he has. So there he is. So let's fix that. First step, again, was assigned to how I could change it. I should have changed it to some receptionist or whatever who fills in the details. Just let's quickly go over it. Oh, that's also good as then Here we go. Um, the two steps now, which are done in parallel, you know, after the first step, we had two things going on in parallel, the MRI, the brain biopsy. So we're going to log out and going to log in as Jessica Adams. That's also one of these doctors. And as you can see at the bottom left, you can see that there are now two tasks open for her because she's part of the group and I assigned those two tasks to her group. So let's do the first one, the MRI, this one. Um, suppose now that we have this super deluxe MRI scanometer 7000 LXC, which takes MRIs and uploads it, of course, to Alfresco. Here we go, just upload it. This is nothing spectacular going on, this is just a regular MRI. You can see, no, nothing funny here. Um, conclusion, nope, nothing to see. Uh, I could do the second step, but suppose it's the end of the day, and somebody else comes in and she wants to do it. So Chi Park is the other doctor, which I haven't used yet. So she's also part of this group. She can now take the brain biopsy. Again, she can see all the files which were uploaded before. She, suppose that we now put a, send a piece of brain to the lab, we get the lab results back, whatever. Again, this is not a really interesting document. This is just a, actually this is a, this is a document which I got from my wife. My wife is a, a lab technician. And this is actually the lab result from a mice with diabetes. Yeah, anyway, she cuts open mice and gives them diabetes to help people. <laughs> That's what she does. I hope there are no animal lovers here in the room then. 
I was in Berlin last week and there weren't any. I knew that up front, of course. Anyway, um, let's see the time. Okay, I need to rush a bit. So I'm not going to continue the process, but you get, you get the, the, what I'm trying to do here. You know, it's just, just, just workflows very fast. You can update them at runtime whenever you want. Very easy to do compared to before. Nothing technical, just, just we're talking about steps. We're talking about people rather than about user tasks with boundary events. And that's the thing. I want to show you some, some now three things uh, which you can do with this. Um, the first thing is that in the beginning, I promised you that this BPMN 2.0 standard is like a standard for all these, um, yeah, all these vendors who do business process management. And I, I'm now using this little Chinese open source BPMN editor. The reason for that is, like I said, I have six servers running at the moment. I have four gigabytes of, of RAM. I would need four gigabytes at least to run like Oracle or HP or friends there. So I couldn't run my real servers anymore. So that's the reason why I use this one, which is actually pretty good. Um, even coming from China. No, there are no Chinese in the room? No. No, they're actually very good. The guy I'm in contact with, and it always crashes with me when I am presenting. But don't worry. Again, picture of my son to not to forget that it crashed. I'm actually in contact with this guy, and he's actually very, very good. He's very friendly. Um, the funny thing is, because he's in China, I can't send attachments to him. That's very funny. So I send attachments to him, he can't open it because they, the firewall there just removes all attachments. <laughs> it's not that easy to work with him, but anyway. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go again to my data dictionary, and I'm going to download now the bpman 2 XML. Just I'm going to put it on my desktop. Here we go. And now I'm going to import it in this Chinese Zhao Qiang, or whatever you pronounce it, editor. Uh, the point is not to show you the editor, but the point is just to prove you that BPMAN 2.0 is something which is real. Uh, so as you can see, it outputted it now into valid BPMAN 2.0, and you can see, you don't need to know BPMAN 2.0 to see what's going on. You see that after the process starts, House chooses the patient, and then two steps in parallel, that's a parallel gateway. So BPMAN 2.0 standard is not, not something we just say to make us look pretty, but it's something real. Every BPMAN 2.0 compliant vendor can open and can edit and can run BPMN2 processes, and that's very important. Uh, then, one of the things we also have as, a, as part of the new activity released, 5.11, which we're going to release in two weeks, is a completely new, well, it's not new, it's a, a revamped modeler. So let me show you what I mean with that. Here we go. So um, the activity model for people who know activity from before has always been part of activity since the beginning until 5.9, I think, then we kicked it out. The reason for that is that we were working together with this German company called Synavio, um, and they had offered this model as open source, right, uh, which we use, but in the last year we saw that there was not much movement going on anymore in this project. So we kicked it out because we couldn't maintain it. Um, luckily, um, Taz found some time, he didn't get a baby this time, but he found some time to actually um, work on the model again, strip out all the code which was useless, and, and make it more maintainable again. So that's what I'm going to show you. This is, this is very new, so it's going to be part of activity 5.11, which is not yet released. So by default, there are these three processes being deployed, just example processes. There is one deployment, that's a demo process. I'm going to create a new deployment now using this BPMN 2.0 process, which I just created. Here we go. It's uploaded now. You can just click on it. You see, it's, uh, yeah, the reason why those lines, you see the lines are pretty ugly. That's the reason because I'm just too lazy to, to calculate the band points in my code. I'm, I'm going to add it, of course, for the real stuff, but that's, that's just the way it is. I'm going to convert it to an edit, editable model. That's going to boot up the new activity modeler. They're working on a new logo, trust me. Not, yeah. This was just made in paint in two minutes. So the point is, again, you can open any BPMN 2.0 compliant model in this, but the big difference with before is that this is not a generic model anymore. This is actually an activity modeler because if you, look, if you click on, for example, user tasks, you see that uh, everything we support in activity is there. For example, execution listeners, which is part of, not part of BPMN 2.0, but something we added as an extra. And you can just add events here, your own Java classes, activity expressions, or delegate expressions. 
And that's all pretty new because before we just had regular BP Man tool and now it's really tailored towards activity. So that's a really nice uh, thing. The last thing which I wanted to show you is that I promised you that the results of this tool is going to be usable by normal developers. So let's now prove that. Here we are. Here we are. So what I did is I just created a very simple BPMN 2.0 project. I have a very simple activity config. This is just a database in memory, so an H2 database in memory. Nothing spectacular going on. A very simple unit tests. Here we go. What's happening here is that you see, uh, so I'm deploying on line 17, I'm deploying the process before the test. So that's what's happening here. I'm just starting a new process instance and I'm just getting the first task and check if it's the, the task for house, the one I had in my demo. So let's just run it. And it should be green if all goes well. No. Choose space and case. Oh, yeah. I wasn't reading very well from my paper. So apparently I've named it this time. This is, this is you can see, it's a live demo. If this were recorded, this, this wasn't working. Um, and the point is that you can very easily tweak this as a developer. For example, I'm just going to show you something very easy now. Uh, where is this? Gee, I was, here he is. So I'm just going to sh change this to myself. And if I now run the unit test, you will see it fails. The point is not to show you like a good unit test. The point is just to show you that you can just take this, whatever the tool produces, you can just take this and extend it, tweak it uh, as a developer. That's the idea. Okay, so that was the live demo part. I think it went pretty well, except for the crash of the Chinese thing. Right, if you want to do this all yourself, what do you need? Well, you need the latest Alfresco community release. Um, the reason for that is that we, we use some of the new extensions that Dave Draper has implemented. So thank you for that, Dave. Um, the code of the server is on the first URL. So that's the server part. And this is the iPod clients, which I showed you. So you can just download it, play with it, no secrets. Um, just a quick remark about the prototype. So you'll see that the server I'm using, so the first URL, um, will be technically different in architecture from the one which will be in Alfresco eventually because, you know, this, this thing started two years ago and started as a separate thing, you know, my child being born and whatever the whole story I told you. Um, so what this does is it is a central server, not on Alfresco, but it uses CMS to deploy the BPM2, it uses CMS to deploy the content model, it uses the REST API to deploy dynamically a new module, an extension module to share. Um, and in reality, what we're going to do is, is not that much different, but all we will have is that we will deploy a JSON version of this workflow. So what the iPad client did is it converted the steps you saw, which I just did by my fingers, convert, converts that to JSON, uploads that to an API. That API, because it's running in the repository, it's very easy to deploy it to the right places, activity, the content model store, and the form config store. And then we, um, the, the share form config, when the, uh, when the workflow API returns success, it will need to reload itself, and hopefully it will load. It. Is that able, is that possible yet, Dave? No, no, but we're working on it, right? We're working on that, so it's, in the very near future, it's going to be possible to reload from the repository your form configs, right? And then if you're running share in a cluster, it's just a matter of sending the refresh cache message around the cluster, all the nodes, and then they will refresh, use it from the repo, um, and all is happy and fine. Um, this is a mock-up, so don't, um, don't, don't give any uh, remarks about UI here because this was just made by a developer just to show you some ideas. Um, the real thing is, of course, going to look very much, much prettier than, than this. Um, so the first thing you already saw, the first one is a create user task. Second one is, a, is, is another step, which I didn't use in my demo yet, is a review step. So basically, you, with one step, you are able to uh, define a review and approve step, like you now have in Alfresco. And, and actually, in reality, that will be uh, converted in BPMN 2.0 to like a multi-instance with an exclusive gateway, pretty complex thing. And there will only be one, one step in this tool. Um, the third thing you see there is a, a choice step. So depending on some form property, you can have different tasks. So what you see here is that um, if the transport is car, you do this task. Otherwise, you do this task. 
And lastly, you will have um, system steps, for example, archiving, PDF creation, moving documents around, whatever is possible in Alfresco. That should also be part in a later phase of this tool. As you can see, the tool looks pretty much like the one on the iPad. On the left side, the steps. On the right side, the details, as I just showed you in a minute. Um, OK, so how am I doing with time? 40 minutes? Four minutes. Wow. That's good because I have like these 30 slides which I still need to show. Uh, <laughs> now I have, I have a stretchable amount of slides. There, I, won't, I can show you a lot of improvements. There are quite a few improvements in the last release which we added to Alfresco. Uh, one of the most important ones is performance. I'm just going to give you some highlights. If you want to read all about it, I've written a very extensive blog post about it. Basically, um, yeah, it comes down to, to activity was already very fast and we made it even faster. If you, if you go even faster now, then yeah, we will break the, the laws of physics. So what we have here is a very simple process, seven steps, uh, all automatic steps. So what happens is you start the process, you go to seven steps, and then the process ends. That's it. That was just to measure the raw overhead of the activity engine. So what you see here, the first two numbers, the first two columns you see here on the left side, this is activity 5.9, this is activity 5.10. You can see in the best case, that's what's this here, that's... Uh, MySQL with no history, that's 0 0.36 milliseconds. So that's one third of a millisecond to run this process. And this just proves that the overhead of the engine is extremely, extremely minimal. To make it a bit more complex, we have the same completely automatic process, one transaction, a few NASA steps. Again, you see the difference between activity 5.9, the first two ones is usually different from activity 5.10. Um, you also see that the Average time goes up. So you see if we add threads, like we add eight threads, the average time goes up. But we also see that the throughput goes up also. That means that the process on itself will be a bit slower, but in the same second, you can do much more processes which are on itself slower, but in general, you'll have a bigger throughput. Um, again, if you want to read about it, I blogged about it extensively, and there are way more um, discussions there uh, than here. Um, some other numbers, for example, is with in this case, you will have seven tran transactions, uh, so seven user tasks, and here the numbers are not that user different from 5.9, 5.10. 5.10 is a bit, a bit better, better but, but not that much. The reason is that you already have seven transactions that cost a lot of time, and here in the best case, you have like 32 milliseconds, which is very, very low for, well, actually, it's, it's 14 transactions because in the test, we're reading it from the database and then completing it. So 14 transactions in 32 milliseconds, which is fast. Um, one of the things we also, and that's the last thing I want to, to show you today, there are many other improvements. Um, this is a very important one. So suppose that you have this very simple process. You provide a shipping address as a user. After you press the done button, you generate an invoice, for example, a PDF. You send it to the user, and then you just wait as in the process. So in the normal case, like in before uh, Alfresco 4.2, what happened is that when you press the done button, there will be like this transaction after the done button until the next wait state. Now, what is the issue is that when this generation of the PDF takes a while, you know, that can take a while, then, of course, your user is going to be mad because then he clicked the button, or she clicked the button, and then she's just going to wait until the PDF is generated. That's not very good. So the way you fix it with activity 510 and Alfresco 4.2 now is that you put an async attribute on the generation step, when the user completes the task, it will just be a very short-lived transaction. So it will see when it enters the second step, it will see that it's an async step. What then happens, it will give this, the further work, to the job executor. And the job executor is just like a, a thread pool. And it will execute, it will execute the, the continuation of the process on itself. And the user will already, um, yeah, having the page will already be, be refreshed for him. So now we have two transactions, of course. But we also win something. So we win speed performance for the user. But also when there is like a system failure, the job executor, he notices this and he keeps this in a queue. So he will retry after a while again to do this. Um, that was the last thing I wanted to say. So we have a lot of new stuff, signal support, or catching. It's like fireworks, um, messaging, compensation, transaction. That's all pretty technical stuff. You see, I just added these slides in the end. So if I, for some reason, would have that have had plenty of time, and you can just follow this. Um, yeah, there, this, that's so basically for, for activity in the future, the first thing we're doing now is the Kickstarter project, of course, which I just demoed to you. 
Also, uh, we're currently rewriting the REST API. As you know, the old REST API has been there for a very long, long time, um, even before I joined Alfresco. Uh, and, and yeah, it's, that's just, the, we're going to fossilize that, as it calls, and we're going to create a new REST API, which is very close to the activity API. So all, all the things which are not yet there now, like history support and whatever, that's all going to be in there. Um, we're going to improve on service invocation to call web services, JMS, whatever is externally possible. We're going to um, work on that. And one thing which is for the further future, so very long-term future, is something that Paul is really keen of is that, um, you know, at Kickstart, you can really def easily define uh, processes, but it would also be cool if that tool can understand like the activity stream from activity with a Y now from Alfresco and can see patterns. If it can detect like, hey, these guys are sending those documents around pretty often to each other, why not, um, yeah, why not, the, why not the tool suggesting them that they should make this a new workflow, a real workflow to make things easier for them? But that's very, uh, very future stuff. Nothing there yet. Uh, last slide. If you want to more know about activity, the to our website, activity.org, the user guide. Um, one, of our, one of my colleagues, Tess, has written a book uh, for many. It's called Activity in Action. It's very good. Um, there is this discount code there if you're interested. Um, and also the, one of our core contributors, which is Kamunda in Germany, they have written also a book on BPMN. It's, it's a very good book because these guys really do a lot of real business process and they have a very good approach on how to do it. It's not technical, it's, it's all about modeling. Um, if you want to help me, you can help me by tweeting about how cool and awesome you found all this new stuff. Uh, would be cool if I have more tweets than Gap in the room next door. Also, don't forget to rate my session. Um, fours and fives are accepted. And any feedback is accepted, of course. Um, thank you for listening. And enjoy yourself for the rest of the day.